Well, it is bright and early. We've got the truck all loaded up and we have got some miles to cover today. So I think we're gonna take a couple more minutes here and get everybody loaded into the truck and hit the road. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. decided to stop here in Reno to get fuel. I wanted to try to make it this far because diesel is about 50 cents a gallon cheaper here. All right, $85 later, we're ready to keep going. Well, we are out here in somewhere I think we're in Oregon now and we just pulled off the side of the road to kind of stretch our legs a little bit uh, it's kind of interesting though to be out here in such an isolated place and there are footings like there used to be buildings out here I mean who who knows why or what they were but I don't know it's kind of neat we're continuing to head north uh, and that's uh, really about all there is to say about it. It is the next day now after pretty much a full day of driving we have reached our destination right here on the Idaho Oregon border. We're actually in Oregon right now, but I think what I am looking at across the freeway is pretty much Idaho So now that we're here, we've got a few things that I want to do There's one specific thing that we're here to do, but while we're up in this country We may as well take advantage of a few other things as well. So let's jump in the truck and get going a tractor in Nyssa, Oregon and it's pretty cool. This would never happen in California but they just turned us loose on their Kubota side by side to drive around and check out the yard. So I am very impressed by this pile of swathers and combines it looks like. I mean this is pretty insane. They've got over four miles of road out here and it, there's uh, dismantled equipment everywhere you look. Pretty much anything you can think of. So we're gonna keep driving around and checking out what's here. Driving through the yard in Nissa Tractor is something that I've been wanting to do for years and it did not disappoint. Although none of these machines are complete, I still feel pretty safe in saying that I have never seen so many balers, so many swathers, so many arrow beds and tractors all in one place. I was hoping that they would have a 467 John Deere round baler. Not that I really needed 
any specific parts, but I thought if it was in decent enough shape, I might try to just grab some things off of there just to have on hand. Unfortunately, square balers seem to be king in this country, especially large square balers. And all they really had on the way of round balers was a handful of New Hollands and Hestons. As I looked over the seemingly endless amount of machines out here, the redneck in me couldn't help but wonder if I might be able to just piece a complete one together with all the parts that were out here. I guess it was probably a good thing that I didn't have a trailer or any way to get anything big home, because otherwise I might have. Yeah, they, so they will take equipment that for whatever reason is not, I guess, worth it for the owner to fix and then just sort of part it out. So some of those, if the engines were still good, someone might want that or they might just want like a rear axle or some sheet metal or just any sort of random thing on an older piece of equipment that you can't really find new anymore. And it's a tractor, pretty impressive with the amount of stuff that they have. We are now out here in Sand Hollow, Idaho, and we're gonna help out a friend of a friend that raises many Herefords. He's got one calf out here that looks like it's got pink eyes, so we're gonna take a look at it and see what we can do. <laughs> so we found the miniature Herefords. I've been looking at them online for a while. Um, we ended up finding them in a town just over the hill there in Emmett. Um, one of my dad's buddies was raising them and um, he was just ready to move on to the next venture. So we picked them up and originally started with five. And then uh, this one right here in the pan with the calf was elusive and evaded us for about two months. And then we got a phone call saying she dropped the calf. <laughs> so then we ended up with six. Six for the price of five isn't too bad, so. <laughs> um, we really got them just to be uh, glorified lawnmowers. Yeah. And to kind of help us keep the weeds down. Um, we'll probably just end up eating them. Nice. Breed them out a little bit and then eat the steers. I got one bull out there, one steer, two heifers, um, a cow, or two cows, two heifers, one heifer, and uh, this little one. Yeah, so I would imagine these could be kind of a competition for like Dexter cattle. It's just the Hereford version of Dexter's really, so. Um, but these are kind of cool. I've never seen the uh, miniature Herefords before. So these are 38 inches tall. Mm. So there's your standards and then there's a small and then like an extra small mini and then there's a tiny, tiny one. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I think these ones stand about 38 to 40 inches yeah. at the shoulders. <laughs> And when Ryan stands by him, they look even smaller because he is a lot taller than I am. So the first thing that we need to do is get this mother out of here. So let's uh, get going with that. Come on, Rose. Boy. With the mother out of the pen, now the real work could begin. Since we didn't have a squeeze chute or an alleyway to work with, the plan was to catch this calf by roping it or, or however we could do it, pin it down to the ground, and then we would be able to administer the medicine. Three grown men against one little calf. Eh, there should be nothing to it, right? Oh, I thought you had That might work. <laughs> Get a rope and tie her off. Can it? the skin pulling it up making a dent yeah and then just rub it out because sometimes it'll come back out of the holder oh. 
does it. He ain't gonna like this part. It's okay. I like to kind of just hold it shut. Because right now she's tearing a lot. So we're kind of like making sure she doesn't just tear the medicine right out of there. Good girl. It's all right. Honey. It's okay. Okay, let's get you one more time. Oh yeah, she's like, oh, I don't want to. That's good. That was a good shot there. Hey. I know, I know. It's a bad day. You're okay, girl. Me. Okay. Nothing to it. Buttercup. There you go. Good girl. Open gate. Freedom. Trip, but before we head back home, there's one more stop that we have to make. mile round trip we are finally home as soon as I saw the smoke and traffic and terrible drivers I knew I was in California let me introduce you guys to Callie our new Golden Lab pup she's actually the main reason that we went up to Idaho even though we did actually a lot of pretty cool stuff while we were up there the whole purpose of the trip was to get her I'm sure that a lot of people are gonna ask and wonder why we didn't get another border collie and we will get one at some point i'm not really sure when that's going to be but right now we both kind of decided that having a good family dog was kind of a higher priority and i just wanted a young dog that i could bring with me out here that had the energy to run and just sort of be a companion with me while i'm working out here on the ranch long time viewers will remember that at one point we had a chocolate lab we had a black lab Oddly enough, I've always kind of been partial to yellow labs, even though I've never actually had one myself, but now I do. We had an awesome trip. We got to see some pretty cool things and do some pretty cool things. But I'd be lying if I told you that it wasn't also kind of nice to get back home and sort of get back to normal. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.
Well, we decided to stop here in Reno to get fuel. Um, I wanted to try to make it this far 